It's a pleasure to be with you. The title of this talk is Indicators and Measurement of Global Health, Part 2. There are no disclosures for this presentation. Objectives include review the global burden of disease by discussing the global and WHO region-specific leading causes of death and dailies. Discuss key concepts of demographic and epidemiologic transitions and discuss key global health projections and predictions for the future. Let's now use some of the measurement tools discussed in part one to consider the global burden of disease. For the next several slides, we will be reviewing tables demonstrating the global and regional disease burdens based on socioeconomic status, gender, and age. The term SDI will be used to reflect the socioeconomic status of a country. SDI stands for Sociodemographic Index, a summary measure that identifies where countries or other geographic areas sit on the spectrum of development. Notice the difference in priority when considering causes of death versus the quantitative impact a disease state has on health as demonstrated by the dailies. These values are recorded as a percent of the total. The five leading global causes of death in 2017 in descending order were ischemic heart disease, stroke, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, lower respiratory tract infections, and Alzheimer's disease. Yet the five leading health impacts via dailies have neonatal disorders moving from the seventh position in leading causes of death to the top of the list, followed by ischemic heart disease, stroke, lower respiratory tract infections, and COPD. So dailies provide a different perspective on disease burden versus just considering the causes of death in a population. As we do a quick global tour of disease burden, we will consider both death and dailies to provide a more accurate and comprehensive view of the global disease burden. These tables present the 10 leading global causes of death and dailies for low socio-demographic index SDI countries. The five leading causes of death in low SDI countries in 2017 in descending order were ischemic heart disease, neonatal disorders, diarrhea, lower respiratory tract infections, and stroke. The five leading health impacts via dailies are neonatal disorders, lower respiratory tract infections, diarrhea, malaria, and congenital diseases. Both lists have neonatal disorders, lower respiratory tract infections, and diarrhea listed in the top five, but in a different priority order. Ischemic heart disease and stroke only appear on the causes of death table, not on the dailies table. Malaria moved from eighth place on causes of death to fourth on the dailies table, and congenital birth defects from 10th place on causes of death to 5th on the dailies table. The five leading global causes of death in high SDI countries are ischemic heart disease, Alzheimer's disease, stroke, lung cancer, and COPD. The five leading health impacts via dailies are ischemic heart disease, back pain, stroke, lung cancer, and COPD. Back pain replaced Alzheimer's on the five leading causes on the dailies table. 
For the next several slides, let's look at some World Health Organization regional causes of death and dailies, starting with the European region. This region's leading causes of death were ischemic heart disease, stroke, Alzheimer's disease, lung cancer, and cirrhosis. The five leading health impacts via dailies in 2017 were ischemic heart disease, stroke, back pain, falls, and cirrhosis. Falls and back pain replaced Alzheimer's and lung cancer on the five leading causes dailies table. The West Pacific region's leading causes of death were stroke, ischemic heart disease, COPD, lung cancer, and Alzheimer's disease. The five leading dailies were stroke, ischemic heart disease, COPD, neonatal disorders, and road injuries. This is the first time we've seen road injuries on the top five list of dailies. For this session, I've divided the Americas region into two subregions, High Income North America and Latin America and the Caribbean. For the discussion of the High Income North America subregion, I've included Canada, Greenland, and the United States. Since Greenland is an autonomous territory of Denmark, it will also be included in the Europe region's tables. The leading causes of death in the high income North America subregion were ischemic heart disease, Alzheimer's disease, lung cancer, stroke, and COPD. The five leading health impacts via dailies were ischemic heart disease, drugs, COPD, back pain, and lung cancer. Notice that diabetes is in ninth position as a cause of death and sixth position in the dailies table. Also note that drugs are in the 10th position as cause of death and second position on the dailies table. In the Latin America and the Caribbean subregion of the Americas, the leading causes of death were ischemic heart disease, stroke, lower respiratory tract infections, diabetes, and Alzheimer's disease. The five leading health impacts via dailies in 2017 were violence, ischemic heart disease, neonatal disorders, diabetes, and road injuries. This is the first time we've seen interpersonal violence listed on either table at sixth position on causes of death and first position on the dailies table. Notice that diabetes is in fourth position as a cause of death and dailies. In the Eastern Mediterranean region, the leading causes of death were ischemic heart disease, stroke, road injuries, neonatal disorders, and lower respiratory tract infections. The five leading dailies were ischemic heart disease, neonatal disorders, congenital conditions, road injuries, and conflict and terrorism. This is the first time we've seen conflict and terrorism appear on either list, position seven on the causes of death and position five on the dailies table. The leading causes of death in the Southeast Asia region were ischemic heart disease, COPD, stroke, diarrhea, and neonatal disorders. The five leading health impacts via dailies in 2017 were neonatal disorders, ischemic heart disease, lower respiratory tract infections, diarrhea, and COPD. For the African region, the leading causes of death were HIV, neonatal disorders, lower respiratory tract infections, diarrhea, and malaria. The five leading health impacts via dailies in 2017 were neonatal disorders, lower respiratory tract infections, HIV, malaria, and diarrhea. Four of the five causes on both of these lists are infectious or communicable diseases. Notice also that tuberculosis is in sixth position on the causes of death 
and seventh position on the dailies table. These tables look at the global causes of death in children under five years old based on their SDI status. The leading causes of death in low SDI countries were neonatal disorders, lower respiratory tract infections, diarrhea, malaria, and congenital birth disorders. The five leading causes of death in high SDI countries were neonatal disorders, congenital birth defects, sudden infant death syndrome, SIDS, lower respiratory tract infections, and road injuries. Three of the five leading causes of death in children under five in low SDI countries were due to infections. Neonatal disorders were by far the leading cause of death in both high and low SDI countries. These tables look at the global causes of death in adults between 15 and 49 years old based on their SDI. Though there are a few similarities, there are also marked differences between low and high SDI countries. The leading causes of death in low SDI countries were HIV, tuberculosis, road injuries, ischemic heart disease, and maternal disorders. The leading causes of death in high SDI countries were self-harm drugs, road injuries, ischemic heart disease, and cirrhosis. HIV and tuberculosis, infectious diseases, were the leading causes of death in low SDI countries and are not even on the top 10 list for high SDI countries. Self-harm and drugs topped the list for high SDI countries, where self-harm was in sixth position on the low SDI countries. Drugs were not on the top 10 list for low SDI countries. Maternal disorders were in fifth position for low SDI countries and not on the top 10 list for high SDI countries. These tables look at the global causes of death in females between 15 and 49 years old based on their SDI. The leading causes of death in low SDI countries were HIV, maternal disorders, tuberculosis, ischemic heart disease, and diarrhea. The leading causes of death in high SDI countries were self-harm, drugs, breast cancer, road injuries, and ischemic heart disease. For females in low SDI countries, HIV, tuberculosis, and diarrhea, infectious disease causes are among the top five causes of death. Self-harm, drugs, and breast cancer lead the list for high SDI countries. Notice that cancer is not among the top 10 causes of death in females in low SDI countries. These tables look at the global causes of death in males between 15 and 49 years old based on their SDI status. The leading causes of death in low SDI countries were tuberculosis, road injuries, HIV, ischemic heart disease, and self-harm. The leading causes of death in high SDI countries were self-harm, drugs, road injuries, ischemic heart disease, and cirrhosis. As with females, HIV and tuberculosis, infectious diseases were among the top five causes of death in low SDI countries. Similar to females in high SDI countries, self-harm and drugs led causes of death. Lung and colorectal cancer were in the ninth and 10th positions for males from high SDI countries, and there were no cancers listed on the top 10 list causes of death for males from low SDI countries. Though there are many lessons we could draw from the global burden of disease data we've covered, this slide lists a few key summary comments. Dailies provide a different and valuable perspective on global health impacts versus causes of death. The leading global causes of death and dailies in 2017 were ischemic heart disease, stroke, COPD, lower respiratory tract infections, Alzheimer's disease, and neonatal disorders. Violence, conflict, and terrorism are major causes of death and dailies in the Latin America and the Caribbean subregion and the Eastern Mediterranean region. Cancers are major causes of death and dailies in high SDI countries. Diabetes deaths and dailies are higher in the Latin America and 
Caribbean subregion than other regions. Infections are a major cause of death in the African region and in men, women, and children under five from low SDI countries. Self-harm and drugs are major causes of death in men and women from high SDI countries. The website listed on this slide is for the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation, IHME, an independent global health research center at the University of Washington. IHME provides excellent interactive global health data access tools. Try it. You will like it. When developing global health plans, it's important to understand global transitions. Let's briefly discuss the essential concept of demographic transition for a few minutes. This model describes the five demographic transition stages as countries move from pre-industrialization to population decline. Stage one applies to countries in a pre-industrialization state. Both birth and death rates are high in this stage. As a result, population size remains fairly constant, but can have major swings with catastrophic events like wars or pandemics. Many of the deaths in this stage are associated with infectious diseases. Stage two is associated with the introduction of modern medicine, which dramatically lowers death rates, especially among children. Infectious diseases are being addressed through the development of public health and clinical systems. Childhood immunizations and access to basic health care increases the life expectancy of the population. There are improvements in hygiene and nutrition. Birth rates remain high. This discrepancy between birth and death rates results in rapid population growth. The population is dramatically younger in this stage. Many of the countries in early stages of development are in stage two. In stage three, birth rates gradually decrease. This is often the result of improved economic conditions, an increase in women's status, and the gradual access and acceptance of contraception. Population growth continues since the birth rate is still greater than the death rate, but the gap is narrowing. Most developing countries are currently in stage three. In stage four, birth and death rates are both low, stabilizing the population. These countries tend to have stronger economies, higher levels of education, better health care, a higher proportion of working women, and a fertility rate hovering around two children per woman. Most developed countries are in stage four. Stage five would include countries in which fertility rates have fallen significantly below the replacement level of two children per woman. The older population number bypasses the younger reproductive population, so the total population number declines in stage five. Understanding these transition stages is essential for long-term global health planning. Another way to demonstrate this demographic transition is via growth pyramids. This graph shows growth pyramids for Kenya, the United States, and Italy in 1994. Kenya was in transition stage two to three in 1994 with birth rates high and death rates declining. The population was heavily weighted towards young people under 35, as demonstrated in the graph. This growth pyramid pattern would be common for many developing countries. The United States growth pyramid in 1994 represented an early to mid transition stage four growth pattern where the population was still growing, but at a reduced rate. The birth rate and death rate gap was narrowing. So there were still more young people than the elderly, but the population was becoming older. The Italy pyramid shows a population in late transition stage four and possibly 
early stage five. The number of young people are further declining in relation to older individuals. The United States and Italy's patterns would be similar for several Western European and other developed countries with low fertility, reduced mortality, and a growing aging population. Epidemiologic transitions closely follow demographic transitions as diagrammed. Epidemiologic transition stage one is linked to demographic transition stage one and early stage two. Country development in this epidemiologic stage one would fall into pre-industrial and the early developing stage. Attributes of this epidemiologic transition stage would include high and fluctuating mortality and manifest as poor health conditions, the occurrence of frequent epidemics and famine. These impacts are heavily influenced by the unmet social determinants of health. Epidemiologic transition stage two is linked to demographic transition stages two, three, and early stage four. Declining mortality is noted in this stage and results in improved general health, less frequent epidemics and famines due to country infrastructures that address the social determinants of health. Epidemiologic transition stage three is linked to demographic transition late stage four and stage five. This is the stage of low mortality rates and results in increased life expectancy, decreases in communicable diseases, and increases in non-communicable diseases. As previously discussed, burden of disease can be divided into three broad groups. Group one is communicable or infectious diseases, maternal and perinatal problems, and nutritional disorders. Group two is non-communicable diseases. Group three is injuries. These pie charts demonstrate the transition of burden of disease associated with development and socioeconomic status. In 2001, for countries with average low and middle income, 36% of diseases were group one causes or due to communicable maternal, perinatal, or nutritional disorders with 54% group two or non-communicable diseases and 10% group three or due to injuries. For high income countries, group one diseases that includes communicable diseases dramatically dropped to 7% with a marked increase of group two or non-communicable diseases to 87%. This illustrates the epidemiologic transition to more non-communicable diseases as countries improve their socioeconomic status through development. If we revisit our African region causes of death and dailies, we see the significance of infectious or communicable diseases as highlighted in purple. Many of the countries in this region are in lower socioeconomic status. If we contrast that with the death and dailies of the high income North America subregion, we notice that only one of the leading causes on either table is an infectious or communicable disease. So how far along countries are on the socioeconomic development path influences their causes of death and dailies. Transitions depend on a number of factors related to determinants of health. In its early stages, the transition appears to depend primarily on improvements in hygiene, nutrition, education, and socioeconomic status. Some improvements also stem from advances in public health and in medicine, such as the development of new vaccines and antibiotics. Most of the countries that are now high income went through transitions that were relatively slow. Most developing countries 
have already begun their transition. However, it is still far from complete in most of them. Let's finish this session by considering a few projections or predictions. This table presents estimated population numbers or expected population trends per age group through the 21st century. These projections come from modeling based on historical demographic transition data. The world's population is estimated to grow from 2020 with 7.88 billion people to an estimated 11.18 billion by the end of this century. The projections show an increasing percent of individuals in the global 65 plus age group. The 25 to 64 age group where a majority of the working class reside is more stable. The younger age groups, or those under 25 years old, will progressively decrease as a percent of the global population by the end of the century. This slide lists the main findings of a global burden of disease study published in The Lancet in 2017. Globally, life expectancy overall is expected to increase by 4.4 years between 2016 and 2040. But if less progress is made, life expectancy could decrease by 0.4 years for males and stagnate for females. If more progress is made, it could increase by 7.8 years for males and 7.2 years for females. There is significant risk that the progress made in slowing the HIV epidemic could be reversed without a continued robust investment in health. This could in turn threaten recent gains in life expectancy in Eastern and Southern Africa. The future is not preordained. The potential is large in all countries to alter the trajectory of health through reducing exposure to key risk factors and increasing educational attainment and income per person. The table compares the 2017 global leading causes of death with the 2040 prediction reported in the article. Eight causes are similar between the two lists, except for changes in order and include ischemic heart disease, stroke, lower respiratory tract infections, COPD, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, lung cancer, and diarrhea. The 2040 prediction adds chronic kidney disease and road injuries and removes neonatal disorders and cirrhosis from the 2017 list. Ischemic heart disease, stroke, COPD, and lower respiratory tract infections will continue to be the leading four global causes of death in 2040 if this prediction is accurate. Let's discuss risk factors for a few minutes. A risk factor is an aspect or personal behavior or lifestyle, an environmental exposure, or an inborn or inherited characteristic that on the basis of epidemiologic evidence is known to be associated with health-related conditions considered important to prevent. Risk factors can also be thought of as a probability of an adverse outcome or a factor that raises this probability. This slide demonstrates the difference between the 2040 reference or the future trend based on what has been observed historically and the 2040 better or what can be expected if continued reasonable progress is made measured in terms of years of life lost, YLLs, attributable to risk factors. The 10 major risk factors for the future include high body mass index, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, smoking, air pollution, external and within the home, 
alcohol consumption, high total cholesterol, impaired kidney function, high diet sodium, and short gestation for birth weight. If reasonable progress continues to be made in global health, a total of 458 million years of life lost will be prevented in 2040. There are three major sets of tools to change risky behaviors. Policy, influencing an individual one-on-one, -on -one, the clinical, and population-based interventions. Policy is developed by local, state, federal governments, businesses, and organizations. It is an effective tool to encourage healthy behaviors, but must be implemented and enforced to be effective. Clinicians are trained in one-on-one -on -one counseling, another powerful strategy to change risky behaviors. Population-based interventions provide another potent behavioral impact that can be divided into two tool subsets, social marketing and community engagement. Population-based expertise lies in the discipline of public health. We need to use all these tools in a coordinated way to change risky behaviors in our populations. Increased public health investments, especially in low resource communities, has been associated with decreased mortality from preventable causes of death, including those associated with infant mortality rates and deaths due to cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and cancer. For each 10% increase in local public health spending, mortality rates fell between 1.1 and 6.9%. This information underlines the important impact of public health on mortality. Adequate funding of public health is critical. This slide lists some key global health implications. In early development countries, the population is much younger, creating enormous implications for funding like education, health, etc. As countries age, they face increased funding pressure to care for the elderly who have more chronic non-communicable diseases. Many developing countries in demographic transition stages two and three face the double burden of communicable and non-communicable diseases. Key strategies for health gains in developing countries include providing enough resources to adequately target nutrition, health, and education, particularly for the poor. Improve hygiene through policies, education, and community engagement. Provide low-cost, high-impact health services like child vaccinations, tuberculosis control, maternal and child health programs, etc., and adequately fund public health. In summary, in early development countries, the population is younger and face the burden of communicable and non-communicable diseases. As countries age, they face funding pressure to care for the elderly. Understanding the global burden of disease, transitions, projections, and predictions is essential for developing global health plans.